it's time to light the fuck up and talk about Bitcoin again. <laughs> you thought we were done with the Bitcoin Chronicles, didn't you? We're not. We're never done with them. Now, let me tell you something, okay? One thing, if there is one, if there is one group of people who get unbelievably, unbelievably pissed every single time I talk about their, their little pet subject, it's Bitcoiners, it's crypto nerds, okay? The Bitcoin idiots, as I call them, and I might need to just call them the coin idiots, or something like that. But that would in, that would insult coin collectors. And coin collectors are actually collecting something cool and useful. Whereas Bitcoiners are not. On on my latest Bitcoin video, remember remember a couple weeks ago when we watched that Tim Pool video about um, cryptocurrency? Anybody remember that? I'm sure some of you were here. Um, we watched that and we roasted the shit out of the Bitcoin, about the Bitcoin people. And it's really fucking funny because a lot of people got really mad at that video. There was... I got like five or six separate comments on that video of people just going, you don't know, you don't know shit about Bitcoin. And you revealed, when you opened your mouth, you revealed your stupidity about Bitcoin and about other cryptocurrencies. You'll see, you'll all see. And that's what they always sound like. They, they always sound exactly like that. Oh, you'll see, you'll see. And it's funny, the, the main critique in that video so in the video that I'm talking about, I don't want to leave people out. You can watch the video. It's really good. I'm very proud of it. But in that video, I, I pointed out that Bitcoin evangelists will always tell you that by the end of the year, Bitcoin will be worth some crazy amount, some great, just absolutely absurd amount. They'll be like $100,000. Each Bitcoin will be $50,000. First, it was $10,000. Then it was $40,000. And some of those goals have been reached never when they said it would be reached. Never when they say it's going to be reached. But some of them, they weren't entirely wrong on. However, in this video, for those who don't know, Bitcoin is somewhere in the ballpark of like, well, let's find out. I can get you it right now. Let's get let's get the live check on Bitcoin value. One Bitcoin is worth $37,134.50 US dollars. Okay? That's a lot. Now, <clears throat> oh, oh, uh-oh, yikers. Uh, there's some uh, bad news on the timeline for that. Here, look, let me just show you. Bitcoin tumbles after Elon, Elon Musk tweets breakup meme. Look at how, ooh, oof, oof. So as you can see, this year, Bitcoin's taken a bit of a tumble. It's taken a bit of a tumble. Now, when we were watching that Tim Pool video, the guy who Tim Pool had on to talk about how good Bitcoin was, was promising that by the end of this year, by the end of this year, a coin that has never surpassed $60,000 was going to be worth $100,000, okay? And people in the comments came in when I pointed out that that was ridiculous and, and irresponsible and not realistic and that somebody was evangelizing to you. They were trying to convince you to invest in something so they could make money off of it, that it was ultimately pumping up Bitcoin. When I pointed that out, people got very, very mad at me in the comments and they started, they came in to tell me that, no, you know what? You're so wrong. Bitcoin is actually going to be worth $200,000. To which I said, you know, doubling the big fish, doubling the size of the big fish is not a very convincing argument. Hey, Lonnie, great to see you. Real talk, I think there's about a 20% chance of 100K Bitcoin in the next two years. Maybe it's a chance. But when you're telling people, oh yeah, oh yeah, 
I'm not legally a financial advisor, but oh yeah, Bitcoin's going to be 100K by the end of 2021. Buy in now, buy in now. Oh yeah, you're being swindled. You are being conned. That is called, that is literally, does anybody even fucking know where the word con comes from? Confidence scam. It's where you rely on a charismatic individual to convince you and assure you that you are definitely going to get something. That is what that is, okay? That is, whew, that is just what that is. Yep, a confidence scam. Now, the way that you can tell about a confidence scam is if somebody is spinning you a fairy tale about how amazing it is, about how amazing something is and nothing could ever go wrong and they're sweet talking you every inch of the way and they never show you any hard evidence of that. See like here, let me show you the difference. Remember, I saw somebody just mention uh, Pathologic 2 in chat. Do you all remember when I talked about how awesome Pathologic 2 is? and I showed you why Pathologic 2 is awesome, and I let you see it for yourself, and then I, uh, I also gave away free copies of Pathologic 2 so that people could go check out how fucking amazing Pathologic 2 is? See, that was me telling you there's something amazing out there and then showing you the amazing thing. No scam needed. I just show you the thing that's awesome. Now, if I was to go, oh, hey, hey, everybody, listen, I got this Kickstarter going. I'm going to make the greatest game you've ever heard. In fact, hold on. I can show you a throwback. Let me show you. Throwback, everybody. Throwback. Where does it, where does it go? We got to go way back. We got to go way back. Where did it go? I gotta find the page that I drew this on. Hold on. It's here somewhere. The Zoom food. Does anybody remember the Zoom food? <laughs> the Zoom food. Let's see if I can find the Zoom food. I know it's in here somewhere. I don't remember which page of my notebook it's on. Some of you old school Demon Mama fans will remember the Zoom food pitch. Yes, here we go. Here you are, the Zoom food. Let me make sure you can see it. The Zoom food. See, I've got the schematics right here. The Zoom food. Now, the Zoom food is incredible, okay? It is the perfect product for this pandemic lifestyle. It is with, for listen, any store that buys a Zoom food will be able to teleport food to your house directly with only a minor degradation in the quality of the food. My, I mean, I mean, you'd barely even notice it. It's just a little bit of charring around the edges, but don't worry about that. We're working out the kinks. The Zoom food will teleport, and and the household model is, uh, it is, is an affordable two hundred thousand dollar cost. It only takes up a nine by nine segment of any room in your house. You know, nine square feet. That's all. That's it. Just nine square feet is all that it takes up. Okay. And, um, and yeah, it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. And listen, you'll save, it, it costs only $200,000 to invest and get a Zoom food right now. And you'll never have to pay for Uber Eats or anything ever again. Never have to drive to the store. You can just teleport. I know it's incredible. Amazing. And if you invest for $500,000, well, I should say, if you're a business for $5 million, you can get the Zoom food micro prototype it's a countertop edition that allows you to have your employees carefully insert the food into the zoom food and teleport it to your customers who are also using zoom food and we are looking to raise somewhere in the ballpark about 500 million dollars to get this project off the ground sound good i'll send you the kickstarter link right now you can donate see that right there is a con you are being Sold and I do a, a, a goofy penis looking tele food teleportation device because it's funny, but these sort of things happen all the time.
And unfortunately, I think that a lot of people, oh, I didn't send you the link. It's okay, I'll get it to you later. Wait, that's not real? No, Zoom food isn't real. I made it up. I'm sorry, everybody. Zoom food isn't real. You can't have a Zoom food. I mean, unless somebody wants to come donate me $500,000 and then I'll do my best, or $500 million, then I'll, then I'll be good to go. Isn't this like how half of Kickstarter works sometimes? No, there is some Kickstarter projects that are bullshit, but there's a lot that are legitimate. There are Kickstarter projects that genuinely show you what they're going to do and have realistic goals. And then there's other ones that promise you the entire world and want you to get on board and put a lot of money up front, a lot of money up front, and they never deliver. And unfortunately, there are a lot of con men in the world of Bitcoin, okay? But we're not here today to talk about the con men themselves. We're here to talk about the effect of Bitcoin con men. Kotaku went yesterday to a NVIDIA GPU restocking event at a, if I remember correctly, yes, a Dallas electronics store. This is a fast forward of the video of them attempting to follow the crowd into the event. Now, I'm guessing a lot of you are gamers here. <laughs> a lot of you might be gamers here. A lot of you might be crying about how expensive it is to get video cards these days. Even though the technology has improved, manufacturing is easier than ever, GPUs should be cheap as fuck. We should be able to all have high-end gaming rigs for cheap. But we can't. And we can't because of crypto. And it's funny, every time I talk about this, every single time I talk about this, people pop in and they go, it's not the crypto people. Oh, it's not the crypto people. It's not the crypto people. It's, it's supply lines. It's this, it's that, it's blah, blah, blah. Nope, it's the fucking crypto people, okay? It's the fucking crypto people. It's the Bitcoin idiots. It really is. And the reason why it's, and they go, well, miners, you know, smart miners don't don't rush these things, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? The vast majority of people, because most of it is a con, aren't smart. They are bit they are bit idiots. They are bit idiots. Okay. There are a lot of fucking stupid miners. And do you want to know what's even worse? It gets even worse. I have very bad news for all the gamers in the audience. Because a few months from now, if, and there's an if to this, I don't know if it's going to, but if Chia takes off and people start moving, um, for those of you who don't know, Chia is a new cryptocurrency that uses hard drives. It uses unallocated hard drive space to uh, produce coins. And here's what's going to happen, okay? People are going to pivot from GPUs to hard drives and then they're going to sell their old gpus and you being the thrifty gamer you are might go oh this is my opportunity to get a cheap used gpu uh-uh don't you do it don't you fucking do it don't you fucking buy those when when you see those prices on ebay when you see those prices on newegg for used uh, GPUs, don't you fucking buy those because those things are going to be shredded. Those GPUs are going to be fucked to shit. They're burnt out as fuck, like physically damaged because they've been running for so long at such high temperatures. Toast. Overclocked 24-7. Yep. And there's going to be a lot of people who go to buy them, buy their kid a GPU off eBay that's at a, an unbeatable price and they're going to get a pile of shit and there will be nothing you can do about it because all the warranties are voided and it's used. 
sold as is. So you better be careful. But right now, this is the state of affairs because everybody's talking about Bitcoin. And when I say everybody's talking about Bitcoin, I mean fucking everybody. I mean, everybody's talking about Bitcoin. I was playing Mordhau the other day and there were people arguing about Bitcoin and none of them knew what they were talking about at all. None of them had a fucking clue what they were talking about. Not goddamn one of them. They were just blabbing. And all of them were talking as if they knew what they were talking about. But they weren't. They didn't. They didn't know what they were talking about. They were just speculating. And finally, one uh, jaded old gamer popped in and said, You all are just speculating. Don't listen to any of this bullshit. You've been getting great financial advice from general chat from Hellfire Peninsula. Listen, I promise you, you're probably getting better uh, financial advice listening to them than you are to the bit, bit idiots. And Mordhau's really fun. But I wanted to talk about this because everybody, everybody and their mother is desperately trying to get in on Bitcoin mining, even though they don't know what they're doing because they're convinced because of people like Tim Pool that by the end of this year, Bitcoin is going to be $100,000 and that will make them millions of dollars. It's a get rich quick scheme. Hey, I'm glad you got it, fucking Lady Kelgana. That's fucking great. Hey, thank you. Thank you very, very much for the subscription or for the dono, for the uh, Streamlabs dono of $2. Thank you very much, Rebind.io. I really appreciate that. Seriously. Hey, thank you, the Progressive American. Happy to have you. Thanks. Now listen up, okay? A combination of pandemic-driven shortages and the planet's increasingly gruesome fascination with crypto mining, meaning it's hard getting your hands on a new graphics card at the moment. And if you're wondering just how hard, look at this lineup and resulting crush of humanity outside a micro center store in Dallas. The video below, captured by Preston A. Lewis, goes for 50 minutes, but you'll only really be interested in the first five or so. Thank you, Aqueous Entropus, for this subscription. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. You all make the show. Whoa! Thank you very much for the five gifted tier one subs, Wolf Glenn. Deeply appreciate it. Means the world to me. You keep the lights on. So thank you. Thank you very much. You'll only be really, really, really interested in the first five minutes or so, where we see a huge crowd form in the store's parking lot before staff emerge to tell everybody that only one card per household can be purchased. Is there going to be enough for all of us? No, they say. Then when the doors open, all hell breaks loose. That's not very safe. Hopefully some other stores and this one in the future can work out something a little more conducive to public safety than, than ha having a heaving mass huddle in a parking lot before breaking into a sprint and then smashing into one another. I don't know. Maybe this is my British heritage, but maybe something like a line? The past 12 months have been hell for PC gamers trying to upgrade their system as a global shortage of silicon chips has impacted GPU production. And then when cards are finding their way to market, they're being snapped up by crypto miners and scalpers who need the advanced processing power to continue mining their fantasy money. This isn't just making it hard to get your hands on a card, but it's driving the price of available cards through the roof. So any cards that aren't being bought by miners or gamers are being pounced on by resellers who are trying to resell the card on Marketplace for double and even triple their RPP, RRP, recommended retail price. What really sucks is that the silicon chip shortage isn't expected to end anytime soon, nor will the delusion of crypto mining. So there's no light at the end of the tunnel for anyone who just wants to pay retail price and play some nice looking games. Let's take a look real quick, shall we? Let's just take a look. Because I, I happen to know the answer to this already, but I want to do it with you. Let's take a look. Let's take a little look here, huh? Here we go. New egg time. Let's take a look. Let's find out. What are the CPUs looking like? Uh, <clears throat> Desktop graphics cards. Let's see what we got here. Let's see. Can we get a new one? Let's take a look at the newest ones. You know, a couple years ago, you could take a little bit of money and you could throw it in and you could get 
you could get a GeForce RTX. Ready? Let's take a look, shall we? Shall we try? How do I add the filter? Here we go. Oof! Out of stock, 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 out of stock. It just goes on. There's not even the there were on the third, fourth page now, fifth page, sorry, second page, all out of stock. Not one. Not a single. And this is all of the 30 line. All of them. Newegg has a lottery. Yeah, they're doing a lottery to get a card and you still have to pay for it. You have to win the lottery and then you get to pay for it. Not good, folks. And watch this. If you want to get a pre-made system, hopefully, let's say you want to get a system. You're like, hey, some of these already have it in there. Well, let's take a look. Let's see what they got, shall we? Do they have the pre-made here? How do I find the pre-mades on here? Where's their pre-mades? I don't remember how to find pre-mades on here. Computer systems. Whoopsies. There we go. Computer systems. Here we go. Gaming desktops. All right. Let's put a, let's get us a 30. Let's see if we can get a, a 3,000 in there. Oh, no. If you even want to get one that's close with an NVIDIA. You're looking at 3000 Uh-oh, this one's available. $4,000 for this computer. Because it's got a 3090 in it, which is the only one available. $4,100. And a lot of these, when you go to check out, they ain't in stock. And you might be wondering, like, how the hell is it possible? How is it possible that the entire world's stock of GPUs is like this? And the answer is people, well, people like Elon Musk and Tim Pool and a, bu a bunch of rich people who already have Bitcoin who want all of their friends and all of their viewers to jump on the Bitcoin magic bandwagon. The get rich quick scheme. And what they do is they do stuff like this. They go, oh yeah, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a financial advisor, but you know, I've been doing Bitcoin for a long time. Bitcoin's gonna be at a hundred thousand. Nah, nah, wait. It's gonna be at two hundred thousand. You buy into Bitcoin now, you'll be a millionaire by the end of the year. And that's disgusting. That is disgusting to me. Quite frankly. That is disgusting. Can you imagine? living with yourself knowing that you're promising people something that most likely will never happen and you're going to be the one who makes who's the only one who make anything won't this just make computers better in the end lots of demand to make make better hardware equals more investment in making the tech no because guess what the companies that are making the tech are making all the money they could want it's you who gets fucked not them they're making all the money they want. They, the pressure, they don't have any change in pressure to make better technology at all, whatsoever. The poor are poorer than they've ever been. The pandemic has assured that. They don't give a shit. They're fine if all their... They don't care who's buying their stock. They don't care if it's gamers. They'll gladly... They'll gladly sell their expensive cards to miners and scalpers and giant firms that are building Bitcoin... Uh, Bitcoin Borg cubes. Yep. Now, some of you in chat might be going, oh, Demon Mama, you're so anti-crypto. I'm not anti-crypto. I actually think the technology that underlies crypto is super, super interesting. But the way it's being used right now, I've said this a million times and I'll say it again, is nothing revolutionary. There is not a single drop of revolutionary um, uh, uh, approach to the way that crypto is being used. The same people, the people who, are the, who hold the most Bitcoin were already billionaires. They just bought into the Bitcoin to make even more billions.
And it's unfortunate because they're doing so on the backs. Did people who bought into crypto back in like 2013 make anything in the end? Some of them did. Some of them did. Yeah. But you have to realize this is the same thing as the GME thing. Do you all, does anybody, there's probably at least a number of you here who remember when I talked about GME. And what did I say about GME? GME was really funny. We loved laughing at it. The memes were hilarious. But in the end, the only people who kept their money, who really made money off of GME, was people who already had the money to gamble. The rich get richer. Money begets money. And, and as I always say, there's a problem with Bitcoin. There's a fundamental issue with Bitcoin. Which is that everyone involved in it, except for the dupes, except for the evangelists. And there's two types of evangelists, by the way. There's evangelists who are trying to pump it up. And there are evangelists who truly believe that Bitcoin is going to change the world. Those are the true Bitcoin idiots. The second type are the worst. They are the true Bitcoin idiots. But the first ones, they're going to make a lot of money. But they already got the money. They're, no, they're not some small entrepreneur. Those people have thousands and millions of dollars in Bitcoin. And if that Bitcoin goes up at all, they just made more millions. Yep. And guess what? It's the same thing with crypto. Someone's going to have to hold the bag at the end. It is a absolute... It is just a fact. Someone's going to get caught holding the bag. And it's already happened. We've talked about this with the Mt. Gox thing. We've talked about all this stuff. Yeah. And it's really unfortunate. But yeah, so um, not only are the Bitcoin idiots cooking our planet, s s guzzling energy for to fuel their unicorn money, but they're also fooling a lot of people in the process. And it's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. Super, super. Most of the people who got into GME have already lost all their money. Oh, yes. Not good. I didn't. Um, I, I didn't, Kel Lady Kelgana. I might at some point. Um, I, I, it just kind of got lost. Yeah. Bit chuds. Decentralized currency is a cool concept, but it's very hard to implement. Because remember, if you have a decentralized currency, that gives an advantage to those who can jump into it with a lot of money. And that means it's going to be banks. It's going to be banks. It's going to be speculators. This happened with this happens with every single coin, including Ethereum. Ethereum wasn't even designed to be a speculative uh, currency replacement. It was designed to be a unique uh, internal uh, decentralized currency that was supposed to help programmers fund things um, between their projects, basically. And it's fucked. Bitcoin dropped 300 since you started this segment. <laughs> since you started this segment, this segment is actively killing Bitcoin. I hope so. But honestly, let's be real. It's not it's not me that's killing Bitcoin. It's people who can play with Bitcoin. Yeah. Line go down. Line is And what happens? Do you know what's going to happen if Bitcoin crashes again? Oh my god. It might never recover. <laughs> Oh, boy. Isn't that more of a capitalism thing than a currency thing? I don't know. You, I mean, it depends on the structure of the currency, right? How the currency is structured and how it, how it becomes distributed is complicated. How long until... How soon until GameStop starts their own gamer power currency, says Prime? <laughs> I don't know. Gayfesh says, Mr. Robot literally had a plot line circling around this. The hackers cause a massive economic destabilization to try and hurt some mega corporation, and it responds to the ensuing dollar crash by issuing its own cryptocurrency and basically taking even more control. Yes. Oh, by the way, when I was out driving over my vacation, we saw a guy holding a sign up over the highway that said, um, it said hackers, uh, they, like a sand, like a, like a, like a protest sign. There was this dude standing over the bridge, holding it over the highway. And it said, um, it said Elon Musk is being, uh, is being blackmailed by hackers to destroy Bitcoin. Yeah. Hack the planet. 
I'm ser I'm not kidding you. I wish I could have gotten a picture, but I was driving. I'm not kidding you. Someone lost a lot of money. Yeah, and it's sad. It is sad. You know there are people who have gone who who've gone from being rich to being homeless because they blew everything on fucking crypto? That's sad. Yeah, you shouldn't have used the password God. <laughs> Listen, I'm so happy I watched that movie. That movie's fucking fantastic. Look, Hackers 1995, God tier movie. God tier movie. I love it. I uh, one I just fucking loved it. Hey, Grime Dango, speak of the grime and the dango arrives. Hack the planet. Honestly, though, that movie made me... Oh, wait, this isn't Woodshop class? Oh, my God. That movie is so quotable. I, I'm, I'm so happy. Oh, yeah, and NFTs are fucking done. That's another thing that we didn't even talk about. NFTs are fucking done.